Hey there, Tracy Kanowski here, America's Virtual Nutritionist, and today I'm coming to you from live from uh, the turret. Our house has a lot of cool architecture, and uh, it's really um, overcast outside, so I was looking for some good light, so I'm in the princess room of my office. So um, Today we're going to switch gears. I know I usually send mentoring tips, but I am still a nutritionist, still have my own practice and have my own health to manage. And so after my own pathogen problem of chronic Lyme, pathogens are high on my radar list. I've spent two years researching it. And today is just the tip of the iceberg, but I wanna put pathogens on your radar. So we're gonna start with uh, the four root causes of chronic and chronic disease and mystery illness. We're gonna talk about what I don't think is a cause and, and isn't really helping the patient. And then I wanna do some education about pathogens. Um, so let's start with the four root causes. I've got some notes because we have a lot to talk about. So number one is that four things cause chronic disease and mystery illness. And mystery illness is either that people have been from doctor to doctor to doctor and they have a lot of labels but nobody's really been able to help them and they just have more and more ICD-9 codes on their forehead or um, or the blood work is fine and nobody can figure out what's wrong, but they have debilitating fatigue or whatever the case is. I'm sure you've seen those. I hope you're not one of them, but um, it's happening more and more in our society right now. So the four things that can cause chronic disease or mystery illness are diet, toxins, pathogens, and stress. And it's usually the perfect storm of all of those. And so if you are only addressing diet as a nutritionist or healthcare professional, um, depending on you know who you are following me, you're only getting one fourth of the picture. And we're gonna talk about the things that pathogens do. So in my opinion, what's not a cause of chronic disease is genetics. I know it's very popular and I've been down the rabbit hole of genetics and you know what, in the end, it didn't work. And I wanna bring up something else for you. But if you tell your patient that I'm sorry, you just can't detox well, what does that do for the patient? Like, um, so I am here to challenge you, not, you know, I hope it doesn't come across the wrong way, but you haven't really done anything, right? Like you haven't helped the patient. Like if they can't, if they truly can't detox well, then your job is to help lighten the load and talk to them more about organic food and far infrared saunas and rebounding and herbal teas, things they can do to help stimulate the lymph flow. Um, but giving them a label like SIBO or IBS or um, sorry you have these flaws in your genetics actually just depresses the immune system further because we are mind-body medicine and I think we have to really stop and respect that that we need to always come back to those four root causes and again you know genetics is very popular um, but just because things are the status quo right now doesn't mean they're right so try to keep that in mind um, some of this also comes up because I did a Ask Tracy session with a woman the other day She's 47 years old. She has multiple autoimmune disease uh, diagnoses. She um, has already switched to a vegan plant-based diet and, um, and she has a lot of GI stuff going on. And again, because of my own stuff I've been through, I immediately recognized that pathogens were playing a role. We talked about how the pathogens impact certain organ systems. And um, she was so relieved and it was like, one of the sweetest things anybody has ever said to me, she said, this is all of the information that I hoped for, but I was afraid to to dream about or to hope for because, you know, you just go from doctor to doctor. She'd already seen new, two nutritionists and they both just said, you know, you're already on a vegan plant-based diet. We don't know how to help you. And um, she had this cluster of symptoms that we're going to talk about um, that becomes fairly recognizable once you understand what it is. So again, today I just want to plant a seed. I've spent two years researching this all since my own sickness in 2015. And um, it's this is definitely, a, you know, just a drop in the bucket compared to what I've learned. But let's talk about pathogen symptoms. So if you're doing an intake on somebody and they tell you that they have tinnitus, vertigo, um, radiating pain, a lot of pain, um, it can move, it can be in one position, they have uh, the brain involvement, brain dysfunction, um, they might say that they feel like they have early Alzheimer's or they can't remember anything, and they could be in their 40s, right? They're way too young. Let's not start telling people in their 40s that they have Alzheimer's again. That's not helpful. We need to come back to the root cause. They're almost always, I, I don't know if I can think of a case where digestion isn't involved, and here's why. Um, 
because as we're fighting the pathogens, all that debris ends up having to be processed by the liver. So the liver's not only doing our own metabolism, the liver's also trying to clear all the pathogen metabolism. And um, one of the big things that I've learned in this, this two-year uh, journey is that pathogens live in the organs. They live in the thyroid, in the liver, in the spleen. Um, so they're not out roaming the, around in the bloodstream, but they do disrupt the function of the thyroid um, or let's say of the liver. And so the liver makes bile, helps us digest our food. And it's the American way to be eating a lot of fat and a lot of animal protein. And the last thing these people can digest is, you know, animal food three times a day, um, besides the fact that some animal foods can actually feed and nurture the pathogen process. So in my own journey, I'm now um, treating pathogens. I've now been off my thyroid medication that I was on for 26 years. I've been off it for a year now, and um, my labs are great. My naturopath says you absolutely don't need it. Sometimes, you know, if I'm in a rough patch, like when I got hit by the, um, I got rear-ended in April, or I got food poisoning here six weeks ago, um, sometimes I wish I had some sort of crutch to fall back on, right, when my energy crashes for something else. But um, if your patient tells you they have IBS, Crohn's, colitis, please do not forget about pathogens because they are involved. You can almost guarantee it. Um, there, again, it's always a perfect storm. There's toxins that are affecting the GI tract too. Chlorine, fluoride, heavy metals, um, aluminum from cans, arsenic in the food supply because it's part of pesticides, herbicides, and, and fungicides. Um, but those are just a few of the things. And let's talk about autoimmune disease for a minute. I have come to believe, and I've been listening to stuff since 2013, um, that autoimmune is our own body attacking the pathogen, not attacking ourselves. And so our body, I do now fully believe, no matter what else is happening in the world and what science and research don't have figured out yet, I fully am on board with the fact that if somebody's diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, they do have a pathogen problem and it's their own immune system attacking the pathogen and our body's working for us, just like when we cut our finger, that it knows how to heal. Our body knows how to manage this, but it needs support and love. It needs the right diet. It needs immune support. So let's talk about some of the things that I think you need to be looking at in your treatment plans. Um, diet, obviously a whole foods diet, plant-based, I think is the, the most healing way that you can go. If people can't get rid of animal protein altogether, then, then limit it extremely, like three or four times a week or, um, you know, whatever you can get people to do comfortably. Um, but remember, they don't have the digestive capacity to be digesting um, a steak, a hamburger, some big heavy fatty food. So at least get them over to an avocado a day. Um, seeds, nuts are harder to digest. Beans are harder to digest. But try to get them on fruits, vegetables, leafy greens. Whether it's raw or steamed, no big deal. But, but get them off those heavy foods that are just adding one more thing to the process. Herbs. I have learned so much about herbs. We have a, a whole counter of herbal teas. So everything from lemon balm to cat's claw to oregano to golden seal, nettle. I mean, I, I probably own 25 teas, so it's too many to mention, but certainly start learning about herbs. Um, uh, immune support. So be thinking about things like zinc, vitamin C, um, chaga and reishi, mushroom teas, um, I have done IV vitamin C, which I think I'll post about in a separate, separate uh, video at some point for clinicians, just for what I went through, and I know we can't order them, but if you have a patient that you think has a strong enough constitution, you could um, certainly start talking about IV vitamin C. And then there's adjunctive therapies like far infrared sauna, rebounding, which stimulates the lymph. I've written about that on my general blog, not in the the mentoring blog, skin brushing, constitutional hydrotherapy, which is alternating hot and cold, contrast hydrotherapy, which again is alternating hot and cold. A lot of this comes from my um, my training at Bastyr, which is a uh, one of the only schools, or at least at the time, that had a nutrition program, and it's where they train naturopaths and acupuncturists and midwives. So that's the kind of background I have. So this has been um, probably much easier for me than a lot of you. I was also highly trained in supplements. I worked for 
um, Metagenics early on. Um, Healthcom was the manufacturer of Metagenics, and and so I worked for Jeff Bland's company. So anyway, I, I go back a long ways in understanding supplements and which ones to use and how to dose them. But again, today's objective was to plant a seed that your patient with all these symptoms that you don't know what to do with and just this general, I don't feel well and I have 20 things happening, that there are pathogens involved. Um, we are in a, a virus epidemic or epidemic, if you want to think of it that way. Um, they're spread easily. Again, they mutate. They live in the organs. So without doing a biopsy, we are not able to find those. And so for Epstein-Barr and the herpetic viruses, for example, um, we can only show past infections, and that isn't always super helpful. But when I was diagnosed with chronic Lyme, I ran into some of the information about Epstein-Barr. I went to my doctor, said I want to be tested for all the herpetic viruses, and she said, well, they're, they're going to be high because your immune system has been run over by the Lyme pathogens. And I said, I want to run it anyway. I'm happy to pay for it. And um, and as soon as I started incorporating in antibacterial and antiviral protocols um, for my chronic Lyme, I got better fast. Like in five weeks, Johnny came to me and said, I don't think you're sick anymore. And in seven weeks, I, I was on the treadmill and said, I think I can go skiing again this winter. So it was pretty profound. And um, you just need to know what to do. Today, again, is not a comprehensive training. But if you need some other resources, I'm going to give you two things. One is that I just recorded a whole liver webinar. And the liver, the liver has an enormous role in what's happening in health. And so I would highly encourage you to check out um, the liver e-course. It's on the orange bar of my website and it's under e-courses and it's $29.99. It is packed. It's an hour training that I recorded specifically about the liver. There's nothing else being sold. It's a solid hour of information with no baloney. Um, and the other thing you could do is if you need help with this right away, you can do one-on-one -on -one training. I have to tell you that I know there's IFM. I know there's IFNA. I've been through um, all of the IFM modules that they offer. Uh, when I was diagnosed with chronic Lyme, uh, I went back and re-listened to all the immune modules, and I have taught for IFNA, particularly the SIBO lecture, and I have to tell you that a lot of this has become self-taught. It's things I have picked up from um, PubMed and books and things God brought me and you know, the list goes on, but um, it's been quite a journey, And but I do feel really confident, and if you need some help, think about buying a one-on-one. -on -one. But anyway, let's put pathogens on the radar for you, because I think all of us want to do the best job we can for our patients, and it's frustrating when you take the triggers out of their diet, but they're still not well, right? Um, I think we've all been there, if we're honest. So, okay, that's it. God bless, and we'll see you next time.